probably gonna have a blue tongue after this, but that's fine. Okay, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Nadia, and today is National Donut Day. Or donut, depending on how you spell it. Regardless, to celebrate, today I'm gonna be frying up some yeast donuts and some cake donuts and topping them off with a champagne glaze. But wait, 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 Nadia. Yeast donuts and cake donuts? Yes, you heard correctly. When it comes to donuts, there's two kinds. There's yeast donuts, which you guessed it, use yeast to make a really light and fluffy donut. And there's also cake donuts, where the name suggests yet again that they're gonna be a little bit denser and a little more cake-like. The ingredients between the two are pretty similar, but the preparation is gonna differ ever so slightly. We're also gonna be doing the ultimate taste test at the very end to figure out which donut is more a glazen. I tried to make a pun there, we're gonna see if it's funny or not. On that note, let's get cooking. I'm gonna start off with the cake donuts. So for this, you're gonna use your paddle attachment and beat the butter, sugar, and eggs. I always like to beat the butter on its own and then add the sugar and then add the eggs. That way everything is just really well combined. In a separate bowl, I'm gonna combine the flour, baking powder, baking soda, nutmeg, and cinnamon. And just before I add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients, I'm gonna swap the paddle attachment for the dough hook. And then you're just gonna alternate adding the dry ingredients and the buttermilk to the wet ingredients. If you don't have a mixer that has a dough hook, I would definitely recommend using a wooden spoon or your hands to knead the dough really well. Dough is obviously gonna be a lot thicker and harder to work with than batter is. So if you have a hand mixer, it's not gonna be strong enough to use on the dough. I've definitely made this mistake before on the KitchenAid. I've used the paddle attachment instead of the dough hook and it got the job done, but it definitely struggled along the way. Mix until everything's combined and then I'm just gonna transfer it to my counter and knead it with my hands to finish it off. The yeast donuts are pretty similar. Over a low medium heat, you're gonna add the milk and butter and let it simmer until the butter is completely melted. Take it off the heat and while it cools down, go ahead and combine the flour, nutmeg, cinnamon, salt, and sugar in a bowl. With the dough hook, I'm gonna add the dry ingredients to the mixture and just give it a good mix. And then I'm gonna add the yeast, give it another good mix. And then I'm gonna pour in the warm butter and milk. The recipe calls for a third of a cup of water, which I'm gonna add all in one shot, but I am gonna keep a cup of water next to me that I'm gonna add in as needed, just so the dough gets the right consistency. This dough is definitely gonna be on the runnier side, but that's okay, that's kind of what we want. So once it has that consistency, you're gonna transfer it to a well-oiled bowl, cover it with some saran wrap, and let it rise for an hour or until it doubles in size. While the yeast dough is rising, I'm gonna start shaping the cake donuts. On a clean counter, I'm just gonna give the dough a little bit of shape and roll it out until it's about half an inch thick. And then using any circle cutter you have, press firmly into the dough and do the same thing for the donut hole in the middle. I bought some letter cookie cutters that I wanna try out with these donuts to see if the shape holds up when they fry, so I'm gonna cut a few of those as well. And you guessed it, we're gonna do the exact same thing with the yeast donuts. All right, so this dough has been rising for an hour. It's just about doubled in size. And it smells, it smells really nice actually. I'm excited. Okay, so I'm gonna shape it a little bit. And now with a rolling pin, I'm just gonna try and make it a little smooth. Yep, that's about, I think it's a little thicker here. I'm just gonna cut some holes in the dough. And then I'm dipping the little one in some flour just so it doesn't stick to the dough. And that's what's gonna make it the donut whole. Okay, did any of this work? So far, I'm kind of liking how it went with the cake donuts because I don't know if I made this yeast dough correctly. I'm ever so slightly just gonna knead this all together so there aren't really any like cracks. Mine's not sticking too badly, but if it was, I would just flour the counter just a little bit. Can already feel it getting like a little bit tougher as well. There isn't really too much of a difference between cutting the yeast and the cake donuts. I am curious to see what the difference is when they fry, and we're just about there. I think I got all the letters I need. H -E -P. Once all the donuts have their shape, we're gonna get to frying. I'm gonna test the oil temperature with the little donut holes. Honestly, I find it kind of weird calling them donut holes. Tim Hortons has kind of conditioned me into calling them Timbits, so donut holes, Timbits, whatever you want, those are what we're gonna use to test the oil temperature. The donuts are gonna cook pretty quickly, and I'm not gonna lie, my oil temperature was probably a little bit too hot, so make sure to adjust it as needed. You don't want the outside of the donut to burn before the middle of the donut actually cooks, so just keep that in mind when you're playing around with your temperature. It should cook for about a minute or two on each side, but it shouldn't burn in the process either. Once the donuts have a nice golden brown color to them, you can transfer them to a plate lined with some sort of paper towel to absorb all the extra oil. Just as I finished frying up these last few donuts, if you wanted to, you could use a cinnamon sugar mix to coat the donuts. 
You obviously want to wait until they're slightly cooled, but you want to make sure they're still warm so the cinnamon and sugar stick to them. Or what I'm going to try doing today is making a glaze. So that's what we're going to get to next. To glaze the donuts, we're obviously going to need a glaze. So to do that, you're going to measure out about half a cup of icing sugar. I have half a cup in each of these bowls, and I did that because I'm going to be coloring them later on. Obviously, you could put all the icing sugar in one bowl if you wanted to just do one color, but we're going to have some fun today. To the icing sugar, you're gonna need to add some sort of a liquid, whether it be milk, cream, coconut milk, or in this case, champagne. Because we're celebrating National Donut Day, to me that screams champagne. So I'm gonna be using a few tablespoons of this in each of these mixtures until I get the right consistency. I'm gonna be going for a thicker consistency with these glazes, so I really don't wanna to add too much liquid. But if you did want your donuts to resemble more of like an apple fritter where the glaze is evenly coated all around, you would obviously just add more liquid until you get that consistency. Ooh, it's fizzing. I also don't know if this is gonna work either, so. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this really isn't a lot of glaze at all. I don't think I could get <laughs> like two donuts out of this. So I'm gonna add some more icing sugar too. Yep, making a mess, that's kinda what I do. Of course, it's just getting stuck in the whisk, so that's great. I guess what I could have done is just made a bunch in one bowl and then separated it for the color aspect. But sometimes I think of these things a little too late. So see how it's kind of like running in one consistent stream? To me, that indicates that it's pretty thin so if you did want that glaze like the apple fritter that I talked about, this is probably the consistency that you're going for, but I want to see a little bit thicker than that, so I'm going to add some more icing sugar. I'm trying really hard to not get any food coloring on my hands because it tends to stain a little bit. So I have some pink food coloring in here and some purple in here, and I'm going to give it a good mix, and we're going to hopefully get a really nice color from this. I hope that's pink. Yeah, it's pink. Ooh, I think I added too much food coloring. If you're putting icing, put it on wax paper, and then the icing is gonna get stuck to the paper. Yeah, it is on wax paper. So a little too much food coloring, but it colors nicely. As my mom just mentioned, I do have a pan here that's lined with some parchment paper, which is where the donuts are gonna be going after they are dipped. So here's the moment of truth. I'm really just touching the surface of the donut into the glaze, and then I'm just letting some of the excess drip off. I mean, I don't think these are gonna be like perfect. But for my first time making and dipping donuts, it's not bad. I am gonna say that the yeasted donuts are easier to dip just because they are a bit bigger so you can get better grip on them. But other than that, there's not much of a difference between the two. I'm gonna add the sprinkles to the donuts essentially right after I dip them, just so that I guarantee that the sprinkles stick. If you wanted to make like a galaxy print when you dip your donuts, you could kind of put all the colors in a bowl on one layer and then use a toothpick to draw some swirls through it. And when you dip your donuts in that, it'll give this really cool like marble galaxy effect. I'm gonna leave that up to you to try. I don't think I'm gonna experiment with that today. You could also make the glaze using icing sugar and like some sort of fruit puree, kind of like the one that we made in the churro video. I think the strawberry one would actually be really good. If you wanted to fill the donuts, I think you could. I do think it would be easier if you filled the yeast donuts as opposed to the cake donuts just because the yeast has a little more air in it. And you obviously just wouldn't cut the hole in the middle. You would keep it as a full circle. All right, these are done. They're looking good. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty proud. I think I'm going to add sprinkles to the blue ones just because they're kind of meh. I'm just making such a mess right now. Like, oh gosh. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? It happened. It's fine. I think the white ones look the best. The blue, purple, God knows what happened to that, but it's fine. These donuts all look pretty similar. You might be able to point out which ones are the yeast donuts and which ones are the cake donuts based on the size. Like I mentioned earlier, the yeast donuts and the cake donuts have very similar ingredients, but they do differ in preparation and as we can see here in look as well. For the yeast donuts, we definitely followed more of a bread style approach. We warmed up our liquids and added them to yeast so that everything could activate, rise, and create a really fluffy and airy donut. Whereas with the cake donuts, we essentially made them like a cake. We beat our sugar and butter and then added the dry ingredients and used baking soda and baking powder as our risers instead of yeast. And you can definitely tell after they're fried, there's a big difference. One is way more light, fluffy, and airy, and the other one is a little more dense. I'm not going to try these ones just yet, but I do want to compare the cake donuts and the yeast fried donuts. So I'm going to dip it in a little bit of glaze. The glaze is pretty good. I don't like champagne, but that's actually pretty yummy. 
The donut itself isn't too sweet, which is nice because if you do add a glaze, it's essentially just sugar. So it's a nice balance. It is also really nice and airy and I didn't burn it as dark as it is on the outside. These donuts are not burnt. I think they're cooked perfectly. Now for the cake donut and even just touching the cake donut, it's definitely a lot denser than the yeast donut, which is to be expected, but let's give it a try. It's so much better. <laughs> I think I'm officially a cake donut person. These are so yummy. Wow. I don't know what it is about them. To me, these just, these take the cake. That's all for me this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And while you're down there, leave a comment letting me know which donut you're a bigger fan of, cake or yeast. I'll see you guys next Friday. Done. Now I have literally donuts for days. Oh my God, there's like fireworks going on in the background as this is happening. <laughs> there's actual fireworks like happening on my street right now, which is like, it's still daytime. So I don't know why they're doing that. But anyway, you can also use some sort of a few fruit, fruit, fruit. Oh, I'm really full. And another firework. You could also use some sort of a fruit puree. The very end for the ultimate taste test. So, oh my gosh. So as my mom mentioned, just wait. Okay, so we have, you can come in. My mom's like working on the balcony. <laughs> you could also use some sort of a, you could also use some sort of a few, I don't know why I can't say this. I have a feeling I made this a little too oily. And of course I wore my favorite dress. Not like my back is gonna die in like five minutes. You could also use some sort of a few, it's almost even better the next day. You could also use some sort of a fruit puree for the glaze. I can't say. There's stars in here. I didn't even notice. How beautiful. Fruit, fruit puree, fruit puree. You could also use some sort of a fruit puree. I'm sweating. You could also add some fruit to your glaze by making like a few. Hmm, they're like little chocolate pearls. Not bad. A little stale, but not bad. 